Good morning, welcome back to the Jag Corner. Just welcome, if this is your first time here, I'm Will Thorpe. I am your host here at the Jag Corner, and today we are playing some, or not playing, we are programming today. Uh, there's absolutely no playing going on here because this is a demo, it's something that you watch. <laughs> so, like a, like a demo scene demo, if you aren't familiar with that, look it up. Uh, the demo scene is, um, it's, let's see if I can do it justice here. It's an opportunity for uh, programmers to uh, kind of show their experience on a console. And and that's one, there's a lot more to it than that. But uh, in the context of what we're doing here, this is, uh, um, this definitely shows my experience. So what we're doing is we're going back to a demo I did back in 2014, so quite a while ago. And I use this demo to learn how to, um, to help me learn the removers library on the Atari Jaguar. And uh, looking at the code is definitely um, a little bit sobering because of how, uh, how little I knew back then. And, and so it's, it's, it's been good though to go back and, and try this out. But Matt Smith, good morning. Uh, on holiday at the moment. With patchy Wi-Fi, so may not make make the full stream. That's fine. Um, your holiday is far more important than the stream. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so good to be on holiday. Um, gosh, I hope to get a holiday here eventually. I, I work freelance, and so I I, I try to take um, <clears throat> opportunities, to just like take a day off here and there, and and so that's most of my holidays. Um, and, and to be honest, my, my work schedule is pretty fluid too, and so I do get a lot of time to just uh, relax. Well, not relax, but to uh, not, you know, push, push myself too hard with work, I guess you could say. Um, I, I do enjoy my work, and so um, vacations probably have a different context if I was working a normal 9-to-5 job, um, and so it's a little bit different. But anyways, uh, enjoy your holiday. I uh, hope it goes well, and and thanks for joining me on your uh, free time. That that means means a lot. So, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're we're gonna get back to the demo today. I'm planning on I want to rewrite the fade routine or optimize it because it, it's a little bit too slow right now. Also, um, there's some slowdown on the intro, uh, which you may see here. Well, I'll probably reset it here. Well. You may see it here while we're talking about the news, but uh, I do have the buildings and the horizon all in. And right now the buildings, for some reason, their position isn't resetting after it loops through. And so we need to go take a look at that, and see what's going on. Uh, because right now it's actually slowing down the song quite a bit because those, those buildings are so far off in the line buffer that it's actually slowing down the music. I believe that's the problem. And so we'll take a look, another look at that. Uh, another thing we'll get looking at today, hopefully, is the scroller. So uh, I haven't looked at the scrolling code for this demo in a long, long time. Um, there's also some some junk up there at the top, I noticed, that's in the overscan. I don't see it up here on my monitor, but I don't think that should be there. Um, and so we'll, we'll probably take a look at that, too. Anyways, there should be buildings, silhouettes of buildings in the background, but they're actually way off to the left. Uh, they'll eventually scroll back around, but I don't know how long that'll take. We'll, we'll be resetting it before it gets to that. But Before we get started, though, uh, a quick reminder to check out jagcorner.com. Uh, this is just where we update on our projects. Uh, we also just keep playlists here for videos. Uh, more details on projects, obviously. There will be updates on projects, updates on other programming things, and, and things that I want to write down so I don't forget them. Really, that's what the, the blog portion of the website is for. Uh, but there's also a newsletter, which I still need to work on. <laughs> I'll spend some time on that today. I, I think I'll have some time here over the next few days to work on that. Um, but the newsletter is will have uh, some exclusive content, some behind-the-scenes stuff, and thoughts on... Things like the stream and the games that we play on stream. So uh, if you're interested in just a little bit more from the Jag Corner, it's there. Uh, be sure to sign up for that newsletter. And it's a, it's an, a very direct way I can contact you in case uh, there's big changes. Um, also, I, I am planning on pushing product in the future. Things like uh, t-shirts, but I'm also working on a book. 
um, and other things like that. And there will be uh, some offers there, exclusive offers through the, through the newsletter. So if, if you want to take advantage of that in the future, please sign up. Okay, enough shilling for myself. <laughs> Let's take a look at some news. Um, the news is actually a little bit slow this week, um, or I'm just missing it. There hasn't been a whole lot on Twitter that I've noticed. Uh, and an Atari age has been a little bit slow, except for uh, that. And I talked about this last week. There's been some updates to RMAC, which is the compiler for uh, the at least the removers library. The removers library is I use it now. Um, I don't know what Seb, uh, the creator of the removers library, what he uses on a regular basis. He may use something else. He may use the original Mad Mac assembler. I don't know. Uh, I use our Mac because it's it, it, it's Mad Mac, but it's uh, the cord the code has been ported, so it's portable, and so I can build it on Linux. That's that's why I use it. But uh, I did notice that there was some uh, a slight update to Hammer Hammer of the Gods. I think he just put out an image, if I remember right. Yeah, um, Eternal Crosser, which I assume is the individual working on um, art assets for the game. I'm showing a few here. Let's see if I can pull these up a little bit bigger. Looks like he's running them through a CRT filter. <laughs> and they don't look too bad. There's uh, definitely pre-rendered assets. Uh, and it looks like they've gone through and outlined them. And it looks like a quick outline. Like the, um, Sorry, I'm getting a little bit picky with the pixels here. When you do outlines, you usually want pixels to be kitty corner rather than... Uh, for example, I don't know if you can see it down here at the knee. There's a pixel right next to another pixel um, when uh, at an when the line starts going at an angle, and so that, <clears throat> in my opinion, that doesn't look as good. I'm not saying it's bad. I just think it doesn't look as good. Um, and so my guess is they did a quick um, when you, they selected everything that was opaque in the image, and then expanded that selection by one pixel and did a fill with black. Or a close to black, anyways. Um, but it looks good, and there, there is. I think he did, and I don't know if I ever shared this on stream. Let's see if we can find it here really quick. There was a video, <clears throat> yeah, right here. Um, sorry for the flicker. He's using his phone to show this. But yeah, it's uh, it's a beat him up. Uh, this video, I imagine they're probably a little bit further along now, maybe with AI and stuff like that. But looks like he has something initial going on. You can hit your enemies, do a, a few different attacks. Looks like there's a couple different death animations, depending on, on how you hit them, um, which is cool. Anyways, it'll be cool to get a kind of a Golden Axe style beat em up on the Jag. Uh, I like the backgrounds. I uh, <laughs> feel very... Um, <laughs> jag like with these uh, kind of mixing real f photography with um uh with some painting um kind of like uh kasumi ninja um and even ultra vortex ultra vortex had a little bit of that going on where they i'm pretty sure they used some photography that they had taken pictures at least as reference and and built on top of that so anyways feels very 64 bit so all right, uh, what's next? Jumping at Shadows had an update, and if you're new here, if you didn't haven't heard my updates on this before, Jumping at Shadows is a new platform being done by Reboot, which has done which they have done some incredible releases in the past. The most recent being uh, Gravitic Minds, which you can take a look at in my previous streams. I did a uh, uh, a Let's Play stream. A couple weeks ago with Gravitic Minds, very good, solid title, um, quite fun, hard as nails. <laughs> um, if you're looking for something casual, don't get, don't play that game. But if you're looking for a good challenge, a good fair challenge, it's it's a it's a very good game to play. Um, Jumping at Shadows looks like it's coming along nicely. There's, I'm gonna pull up some screenshots here because <clears throat> I don't think we've looked at these on stream. Um, have some cry color effects, so you have this cool glow going on, which is awesome. Different enemies, very, I, I like something I, I just noticed, I didn't notice this before, um, is the backgrounds have a very desaturated look, and your, your sprites, your character sprites here, are much more saturated, it makes it very easy to identify those, um, 
very good initial design going on here. Looks very nice. Um, I, I, to be completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of the look overall, but uh, that's just an aesthetic opinion. I think visually it's being constructed, it's being designed very well though. So anyways, looks cool. Uh, the update though that I wanted to get to, uh, there's a quick status update here. Um, and I don't know if I'll read through all these, but I just wanted to make everybody aware that this is here. There's the addresses up here at the top. If you're interested in taking a look at that yourself, it's at itch.io and it's anderlex.itch.io. Um, but yeah, it looks like they've done some, they've converted all their sprites over to an 8-bit palette to free up memory, uh, performance boosts by engine tweaks, which is interesting to me. I don't know if this means uh, Raptor engine tweaks, and so this will trickle down into Jag Studio eventually, these optimizations. Um, and then other, yeah, this is just game related stuff here. Uh, looks like they have 15 levels designed and playable. I don't know if that means they're like beta levels, meaning that they've just been cobbled together. We're going to see how, how fun these are to play and then revise them as we go along. Not sure what that means. Um, anyways, it looks like they're going to get some new enemies in and some more animations and more levels done soon. So it seems to be coming along pretty quickly. I imagine uh, Lawrence over at Reboot is working on that. Uh, quite a bit right now, um, along with Ander with with the graphical assets. So cool, cool to see that coming along so quickly. I wish I could get my stuff done that quickly. <laughs> I guess I just need to make the time for it, right? Um, yeah, uh, that's it. If anybody else has spotted anything else uh, newsworthy, let us know in the chat. Um, I, I tend to not jump over to that once I get started on the programming, but. Uh, sometimes I'll make an exception depending on what it is and if I don't get to it today I'll get to it tomorrow and tomorrow we'll be doing more programming as well um, so yeah we can we can cover more updates in the future uh, or tomorrow if we need to let's get started I'm just looking at my switcher here okay so where we left off was uh, we were working on that horizon in the background for the first card, for the intro card, uh, along with the building silhouetted. So let's, uh, let me reset this and we'll go over to the large screen so we can check it out. So I've been having issues with the buildings. For some reason, they don't uh, work that time. They, they reset just fine. Uh, or don't reset just fine and so they're kind of the buildings will have these yellow stripes um, And I don't know if that's just slow RAM initialization or something um, but Anyways, I extended the gradient. I think I want to rework the gradient for the horizon uh, Eventually right now. It's it looks fine, but I, I think this looks a lot better than it did before. I like the way this is looking um, Oh, I was gonna uh, looks like we're still experiencing some slowdown there, which is interesting. Um, yeah, um, I have some ideas on how to potentially fix that. But uh, so, anyways, yeah, where we ended last time was was right up to the scroller, basically. I was still working on some assets. Something I want to start off with here to begin with. Um, gosh, I kind of want to take a look at that building coding walk you guys through how I did that just to see if we can find where that problem is. So what happens uh, is once this demo loops a few, few times, you'll see that the buildings keep shifting over to the left. Um, I, I'm not, there's something that just needs to be reset when we loop, probably a variable. I just don't know which var. I'm guessing it's this display layer X position that needs to be reset. Um, I don't think I'm currently, well, let's see here. Yeah, I don't think I'm resetting those. We'll find out here. Let's, uh, I'll highlight that. Sorry, you guys can't see the code. Let me switch back over to that. Uh, and let me know if I need to adjust the audio because uh, I think my levels are fine on the Jaguar. Like they aren't too loud. I don't mind having just a little bit of background music there. Uh, this music is done by an artist 
a composer called Greg Tooby, and I'm grateful that he let me use this song, uh, this mod file, um, for this demo. It was actually technically in the public domain uh, at modarchive.org, which is a place where you can listen to a ton of mod music, old mod music. Um, but I, I decided to contact him directly so I could um, make sure I had permission to use it for this demo. And I really appreciate it. It was a little bit hard tracking him down, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the details, but it was it was hard to find a contact for him. But I, I, was, I think I had to contact somebody else or a couple different people in order to contact him. And uh, he, he didn't have much of a digital footprint to, to follow online. And so I, I was able to track him down. And, and thanks, Greg, if you happen to ever see this. I doubt you ever will, but thank you anyways. Um, it's a great song for this demo. Um, all right, I highlighted this. I think this is where the problem is because uh, we need to reset all these values back to Z or not zero, but oh, okay. So what I'm doing, let's see if I can find it here. Horizon, yeah, I should be resetting it here technically because on most of these we should find, yeah, I'm, I'm resetting most of these already. It's just the first three I'm not resetting for whatever reason. Um, so let's go ahead and just right here. I'm just going to do it right here. So display layer X position. And we're going to do 0, 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. 0, 1, 2, 3 equals uh, 0 on all those. Two. One, two, one more, three. Three, set those all to zero. And I think that will solve that problem. I'm, I am like 70% sure <laughs> that will solve that problem because we're not resetting those anywhere else. And this is actually, I think, kind of a poor way to do it. Uh, so what I'm doing is all my variables are outside of my main while loop. I shouldn't be doing that. I should be... This is past Will um, doing this. Uh, I, sh I should have kept these local to the loop uh, or even to the state that we were working with uh, because I'm using a state machine to switch between the different states, the different cards in the demo. Um, and those should have been local to whatever state they needed to be used in. And for some reason, I decided not to do that. And we may, I may come back and, and fix all that uh, once we do the big changes for now as long as I know that's what I'm doing it's fine it's it uses up memory but our demo is so small anyways I'm not too terribly worried about it so let's go ahead and reset the skunk board and push that out again and we'll be able to see after probably three or four loops and and I'll, I, I'm going to be paying attention to this passively but um, yeah so that's what it should look like every time it loops or something similar to that right now I'm randomly oh maybe I should do that right now so up here near the top yeah our music is definitely slowed down there that's got me really concerned actually because that's one reason why I didn't have the horizon and and the buildings and the rainbow thing in the background is it was slowing down the music got me really concerned because it really shouldn't be slowing down that much the horizon is just filling the background that's fine um, the buildings aren't going that far off to the left of the line buffer I could optimize that um, just as I could just run a check that just says okay if you go off uh, detach um, and then the rainbow or the, the, the ribbons, I guess is what I should call it, the ribbons in the background. Uh, I think one of them goes off screen, so we could pull one of those off. But, um, yeah, I just don't know if it'll actually fix that much. Um, so I may need to pull back on a lot of that to get the song running quickly again. Um, the, the other reason why the song is running slowly is I think it's using... No, I think this is just a four-channel mod. Um, so it shouldn't be that slow, but I don't know. Uh, I'll take some time probably on my own time to optimize some of that, but 
Um, I was going to show you the buildings here really quick. So the horizon, what I'm doing is I took that strip. If you remember the last time a couple weeks ago when we were working on this, it was just a vertical strip of the gradient. That way I'm not doing the whole screen to save memory. And then what I'm doing is I'm, I create a temp screen with that strip of the gradient. And then I create a buffer that we, that we paint that strip over and over again from left to right. Um, and, and then I do that. And so that just goes across, and I think it's 21 times for the full width of the screen. Um, and then that's just static in the background. There's no parallax going on there because I didn't want any type of shimmering effect uh, with the scroll. And I actually need to test this on a CRT. I've been only watching it on an LCD, but I wanted to make sure that, that gradient looked good on a CRT. Um, and I can do that another time. I'm going to be repainting part of that gradient anyway, so I'm not too terribly worried about checking that now. Okay, um, and then the buildings, the buildings are interesting because what I'm doing is I'm creating uh, two buffers that we can uh, draw from or that our sprites, our building sprites can use. One is 16 pixels wide and one is 24 pixels wide. So there's two different building sizes and then <clears throat> We clear those so they're black, there's no garbage data there, and uh, we turn off the transparency, and that's how we make them look like silhouettes. Um, and then I have building total, which is how many of those building sprites, and I think right now it's 24. I think I could drop that down to like 19 or something. That may help speed things up, actually. Um, and I'm, and then I randomly from uh, let's see here, building offset. Oh, so uh, the way I set its sex position is we just start attaching them to the, to the display layer, starting at zero pixels on the left, and then it shifts the width of the previous, yeah, of, of, of the previous building, and, and randomly spaces them uh, zero to four pixels. So it takes the width and adds up to zero uh, of four pixels of distance so we have a little bit of space between each building um, or maybe not any space from no space to four pixels of space and then it goes across and just adds those buildings uh, and I think right now it's 24 let's take a look pretty sure yeah building total 24 so I could probably knock that down to like 19 and I did this uh, define uh, here so I could easily change that because there's a few instances where that number shows up. Oh, in fact I need to make sure when I'm detaching everything down here. Yes. Okay, I am doing that correctly. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I'm adding the buildings. It's pretty simple. Um, and it, it looks it looks nice. It definitely makes that background far more interesting than looking at black. So, um, yeah. So that's how that's how I did that. So what I, what was I going to work on first? Um, gosh, I almost want to spend all my time trying to speed up that song. Um, what we're going to do first here is there's a fade at the beginning. Um, and let me just show you here with the emulator is it fades up and right now that's actually slowing things down a little bit um, and I think I might be able to fix that I don't know for sure but I think I'll be able to fix it so I have a fade function that I've been using for a while for live fades uh, let me find it yeah live fade um, and I think the reason why this is slow is because it's having to parse out the red, blue, and green values every time for every frame. Um, and it does that for the color that we're, the vector color, uh, the vector, the color that we're traveling to. So let's say we have for one palette ID, so we have 256 colors, right, that we're, that we're fading for our 8-bit color. Uh, for each palette ID, we have to figure out what color we're going to. And, and in order to do that, I have to separate out the red, green, and blue channels, and I'm doing that each frame for the color that we're traveling to. 
So I know we can save some time by only doing that once because that color isn't changing. We're just fading to another palette. And so I can do that at the very beginning of our fade and just say, okay, here's uh, all the colors that we're going to. Let's parse out the red, green, and blue channels and never do that again. <laughs> and so that's gonna save us a lot of time. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I know we can speed it up that way. Um, I think another way we can speed it up is the other thing that we're doing is so we have the color that we're traveling from um, and every frame right now I'm parsing out the red green and blue for that as well we could save ourselves some time by tracking those separate channels uh, separating them at the very beginning and then tracking them in an array rather than parsing them out each frame so I think that's going going to save us a lot of time by just tracking this in memory and then updating the the ID for that uh, color lookup table uh, ID. Um, so what I'm going to need is I'm going to need two, uh, two two-dimensional arrays uh, that are 256 times three for our three, three channels that are uh, unsigned 8-bit. Um, so let's go ahead and add those. I almost want to add them here because there's something that I'll be using with this fade routine all the time. Um, what should we call them? So we know they're unsigned 8-bit integers. Um, I'm deciding whether I want to use a two. I hate trying to pass two-dimensional sprites <laughs> into functions. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a one-dimensional sprite that will be 256 times three, and each ID in the color lookup table will be three uh, points in that array for the red, in this case, red, blue, and green, or BG, because that's how color's organized uh, in on the JAG. Um, and so it, for the first ID, it will be red, gr red, blue, green, second ID, red, blue, green, and there'll be three values all the way up to 256 IDs. And, and so we just need, we can do a two dimensional array. We just need to track the offset. We just need to offset every three for each ID uh, in the color lookup table. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I sound like I'm not as clear as I could be. Um, so our first one is going to be, uh, gosh. I always have a hard time naming these. I should have thought of this a little bit before the stream. We have current current colors. Kind of, I want to make this as short as possible too, um, while still being clear. So current colors. So this is the, what we'll be doing is we'll be running through a for loop on this array to update the actual color lookup table after we've updated all of our colors. Um, so current colors, I think I'm fine with that. And what is 256 times three? That's 768. So 768 values. And then we'll have another array. Oh, whoops. And move the microphone here a little bit. It's getting in the way. Hey, um, I was just taking a look at the demo here, and it looks like our buildings are fine now. So yeah, it was just I wasn't updating those expositions on the dis the display layer. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that. When I do the buildings, I'm not actually moving the sprites. I'm just attaching them to a display layer and then shifting the display layer. So, which is a way to do fast scrolling. Okay, back to coding. So we have our current colors and then our, maybe we should just call this final colors. And the idea is our current colors are traveling to final colors. They call that a vector. Um, and so what we'll do is on the first, 
or even before we start the program, we will be breaking out all the final colors into their RBG color channels. So we only do that once at the very beginning of the program. And I may write a little function that does that um, to keep it just separate from our live fade so we can prep that before we actually fade in. Um, and we'll do that with our current colors too, but our current colors are all black, so those will all be just be set to zero at the very beginning. But we will write a function for that as well. Um, taking, oh wait, we technically don't need, because we're not, you never fade the first chat, uh, the first ID and the color lookup channel because that's always black. Um, and the reason why it's always black is that's the color for transparency on the Jag, is a pure black. And so um, we technically can knock three off of this. So 765, which I like, that's a good number. Anything divisible by five or 10 is easy for me, so. Um, okay, so we got that, and I almost want to write an updated, or just start fresh on this, because I was thinking I was just going to update the old function, um, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think I can, I'd rather just start over fresh, because this, is gonna, this will be fairly simple up front, so we're going to call this new live fade. We'll change this name in the future uh, once we get rid of the old live fade here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going we're to bring in our arrays. Current colors. And we can just bring those in as pointers because arrays are just pointers at the end of the day. Um, and uh, hmm. I'm just deciding how optimized I want to be with this. So this is assuming you're using the entire color lookup table. And I'm fine with, actually, we're fine. These, these are just going to be pointers, um, are going to be declared as pointers anyways. So we bring in our current colors and then our final colors. I'm going to put a little note here that says uh, this is um, each a uh, 16 bit color value broken down to each channel rbg like that just just so in case anybody else looks at that in the future they'll know okay so we're bringing in both those Uh, both those pointers and we will actually be updating the current colors the final colors won't ever be updating that's fine um, cool we got that so we got our current color what we're fading to we need I think we need this fade step from fade step like that we need that as well Fade step, it's fade delay counter. So this just controls the speed of the fade. And then the fade delay, these are both just integers. And fade delay, and this fade delay counter, we actually need to track this and change it. And this will be a variable outside the function, that's why we're bringing it as a pointer as well. Um, and the fade step. So the reason why we do the fade step, hmm. So this is another thing that you have to figure out. Uh, yeah, th yeah, we'll we'll be fine. You, you always set this to uh, 33. Actually, it should be 32. Um, and the reason why is that there's 32 for red and blue. There are 32 steps. So to go from uh, no red to full red is 32 steps. And so we keep track of that just so we don't go beyond what we need to. I, I wonder if we even need this, to tell you the truth. It's a good way to track 
um, to see if our fate is done or not. Um, that's one nice thing about it. Um, and so we'll keep it. And then the fade delay counter, this just counts down to uh, zero and is set by fade delay. So we pass in how long we want each step in the fade to take. So for example, three frames, if we set it to three, and this counts down from three down to zero. And so that just makes it slower, slower or faster. Um, and then I do want this uh, clut min and clut max. And this just tells us what range in the color lookup table that we're fading in case you just want to fade the first five colors or the last five colors. Gives us some flexibility there. So. Okay, I think that is it for that. So let's bring that in to the C file and actually define it. Yeah, those buildings are definitely working now. That's good to know. Okay. Um, oh, there is one more thing. Let's see here. Am I doing it here? Hmm. So... With the light fade, I have a fade type for fade up and fade down. And so you're manually selecting that. What I'd like to do is just have it detect whether it needs to fade up or fade down. Um, that way, all you need to do is update your current colors and your final color arrays. And, and then it will just detect whether it needs to fade down or up. It just changes a vector, a negative or a positive vector. What would be nice... Um, is to have that only update on the first frame of the fade. So it checks for that, um, and then it never checks it again. Um, hmm. So let's do that. Uh, so check fade vector. Um, and the way we can do that is we have this fade step, right? And the first one will be, uh, it'll always be set to 33. Let's just assume that now. So if fade step is equal to 33, then we do the vector check. And I'm actually going to add our uh, reduce fade step. Um, if fade step is greater than zero, then fade step minus minus. So we go down one. And that will be at the very end of this function. Um, I just wanted to add that while I was thinking about it. And that way we only run this once. Um, so how do we check for the fade vector? Well, one way we can do that, um, uh, this is actually a little difficult now that I'm thinking about it because it's possible that there's a color in the color lookup table that um, won't tell us the vector. <clears throat> Let me think about this. Yeah, that is an issue. Oh, the other issue you might have is some colors in the color lookup table may may need the vector to go down, so to fade down, but some may need to fade up if you're just fading to another palette. Huh, tricky. This is tricky. You almost have to check this vector for every frame. Um, it's not an expensive check. Is it something that I want? I don't need it right now, but I was kind of hoping to use this fade in the future for future programs. So let's let's go forward on that assumption um, that I'm going to be using this fade in other programs. So we actually need to do this check fade vector for every 
color in the color lookup table. Um, so this will be done in our for loop actually. Okay, so we're gonna have a for loop um, that just goes through i equals our uh, color lookup min clut min which could be zero. Technically, you can't change zero because that's black, right? You usually start at one uh, as your color lookup minimum. In fact, we can do a, uh, nah, I'm not gonna worry about that. This is pretty basic. I'm not gonna do a check for that. Um, I does not equal the max. Max. So that's the max value. And we go through that, all those values. Now we can do our um, fade vector vector check, and we just do a comparison. If um, between our current colors, whatever value we're at, minus. final colors and we're checking the same ID in that lookup table and I'm gonna wrap this in parentheses and if it's greater than zero let's see here so for example let's say our first our current color is one and our final color is two if we do one minus two, that's a negative. That gives us negative one. And that means that we have a positive vector, so we need to fade up. So we'll set our vector to one rather than negative one. So we'll need a variable here. Int fade vector. And we're gonna set that to zero initially, but it will either be a positive or a negative. Um, so if it's greater than zero, fade down. Okay, so let's do the inverse. So let's say our current color is two and our final color, the color we're fading to, is one. So it's two minus one, which gives us one, is, which is a positive value and we need to fade down that means we're fading down to that color because it's less than um, yeah so uh, greater than zero let's fade down fade up and then else fade vector is equal to one and then fade vector is equal to negative one, like that. Yeah, that should work. And so for each color value now, we can fade in the appropriate direction until we reach that color. Now to do the actual fade um, or the change, so current, we're gonna just change our current color. Ooh, this is a little tricky now. We need to go through three colors. We need to change three colors. So we need another for loop. For ii equals zero, we need to go through three colors. Uh, does not equal three, ii plus plus. Okay, and the reason why we need to do this uh, in a for loop is we need to check to see if we're on the third value, which is green, because that will not be fading up by one. That will actually be fading up by two because the green has twice as many values as red and blue. Um, and for 8-bit color on the JAG, it's, it's formatted in 556 color. That means there's 5 bits for the red, 5 bits for the blue, and 6 bits for the green. And so, we have to fade the green a little bit 
more than <laughs> red and blue in order for it to uh, it gives us a nice linear fade you could fade it up by one um first of all it'll it'll take a little bit longer to fade the greens and so those will always be lagging behind the red and the blue um, and the color will look a little bit weird as it's fading too i imagine um, it seems like i've seen that before but I, I say i imagine because i can't guarantee that <laughs> it's been a while since i've done fade code like this so um <clears throat> okay and this we have to move our our vector check into that too because we're dealing with a two-dimensional array that's why so our uh picking the ID in the color lookup table here with this for loop and then the red blue or green value with this for loop so this is the first dimension this is the second dimension in that array and we actually need to do a plus ii here for that offset so this is the first dimension which is the ID in the color lookup table and then this is the color channel um, yeah and that gives us our two-dimensional array and we can actually um, add just a variable here for selected color channel or selected ID and color channel equals and we can just do this Oh, one second, one second. I'm glad I'm breaking this out because it needs to be I times three. That's our first dimension. Uh, remember, we're doing a, a linear array rather than a two dimensional array. And so each, we have 256 values in the color lookup table, and I know I've explained this before, I just wanna make sure I'm wrapping my head around it, but for each ID, there's three values in that, and that gives us our second dimension. Um, and then, there, yeah, and that second dimension is red, blue, and green. And so we need to make sure that for each, uh, every time we shift to another ID in the color lookup table, we're shifting by three. That's what this I times three is. And then we get our channel with an offset of with II, which is zero, either zero, one, or two. So um, one sec, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. My nose decided to wake up. I needed to go uh, take care of that. So, all right. <clears throat> so we have uh, we're selecting our value in our array, and now we can just update uh, this. So we only have to run that math once uh, per channel. 
Honestly, I, gosh, I don't know if this will be faster. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not sure. I'm not going to make that assumption right now um, that it won't be. Okay, so we have our vector selected. <clears throat> yeah. And now we can actually change, check, or adjust the color according to the vector. Um, so our current color, we're going to be changing that. Our current color channel. We'll need to be doing a check on this too. If <clears throat> current color channel, so the value there does not equal. Oh, let's see here. Do we need to do a check for each vector for a positive or ne negative vector? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, so we need to do uh, a case for or an if statement for each vector. Uh, and here's here's why. So let's say we're we're changing red, right? And we're fading up. So we're adding one to that red value. We need to make sure that we never. Oh no 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 no. We're fine because we're only going up by one per frame. So we don't need to check this. We're, we don't need to do a check on this. All we have to say is if I, I was on the right track, if it doesn't equal the final colors, color channel, if it doesn't equal, we just increase it. We do need a check uh, for, oh no, 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 no. We can do that inside here. So if it isn't, if it hasn't reached the color yet, or the value that it needs to be for that color channel, we increase it, but we need to do a check. So if II is less than two, so for red and blue, we increase it by one, and for, um, and for green, we increase it by two. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, I'm getting the sneaking sus suspicion that I'm missing something. <laughs> and so we may just have to uh, get this uh, going and uh, to see, and then start troubleshooting. We may spend the whole stream on this, we'll find out. So if uh, II is less than two, then we do, uh, then we increase it by one plus equals one like that. Uh, one times our vector times by fade vector so which will be one but if it's fading down to a color it will be one times negative one which will make it go down one instead that's what why that fade vector was important else so on on two which is our our so zero is our red one is our blue and two is our green so on green we'll just be doing same thing but instead by one we're doing it by two instead so two like that there is a problem with this um on on this Let's see here. Because sometimes our green will be on an odd value, which isn't good. So we do need to do a check on our green channel. And this is kind of what I was thinking for all the channels. But um, our green, we have to be a little bit more careful because we're not increasing it by one. We may overshoot the value that we're going to. Um, and so we need to do a check. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's a clever way to do that. I know an unclever way of doing that, a non-clever way of doing that. Um, just wondering because let's say on our green channel, we have a value of three, but we're fading up to four. So when we plus two, it'll actually overshoot it by one and it'll go to five because three plus two is five. We need to check 
before that so when that happens we actually bump it back down to where it needs to be um, so if green is three and then we add two and we were going to four and now it's five we need to do a check after we do this See, the non-clever way is just to do an if check for each state of the vector. So for positive one or negative one. I'm just wondering if I could use that value to only run one if statement. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, we're just going to do see if we over shop. If fade vector is equal to one, excuse me. I don't think my nose is going to give me a break here for the next hour. <laughs> it's the one problem of living where I live. Uh, it's really dry here. And so my sinuses just have problems with that. Um, okay. Else if, we'll do an else if here. It's kind of pointless to do an else if, but I just want to write this out so I, in the future, if I ever come back to this, I know what I'm doing. It's easier to read the code. So uh, one is our fade up. So if we, if we overshoot, we need to check if the current color is greater than the final color. So uh, if, Yeah, then we just run another if statement. If current color is greater than final colors and that selected channel, then we just set it to uh, we just set it to the final color. Equals final color. Like that and then we do the same thing for if we undershoot it <laughs> so if we go below the value uh, for when we're fading down so when we go oh whoops I didn't copy this whole thing like that uh, yeah so if it's less than the final color so there is one problem with this. Um, for the fade down, we can potentially, well, and for the fade up, we can potentially roll off, roll beyond the value. Um, <clears throat> we can actually check for that. Um, up here, if, let me take this whole thing, we do a check on this, gosh. I hope this is faster. <laughs> Starting to think it won't be. Um, plus, is greater than, uh, so your value can be, um, for the green, it's 64 values. So greater than 63, zero to 63, um, which is 64 values. So if it's greater than 63, and this is good because we're dealing with unsigned 8-bit integers. Yeah, that's fine. If it's greater than 63, then we just... Uh, uh, if it's less than, we actually increase it here, which is correct. Else, we just set it to that current value. Let's see here. Oh, we can we can actually set a whole range here with a boolean so and so we're checking actually I'm gonna put this at the other side so we're gonna be setting a range here because we don't want it to go well we can't let it go below zero it's an unsigned 8-bit integer how do I check for that I've done this before 
pretty sure anyways. Because, so let's say green is at 1, and it does a minus 2 on the vector to change it. We don't want it, it can't go to negative 1. What it will do, I think it, it cycles, if I remember right. It rolls over and it becomes the full value, I think. Yeah, so... Um, I'm going to wrap this in parentheses one more time because we're going to be setting a range here. I think I know how we can check for this. So, we don't want it to go above 63, but we also don't want it to go below zero. And so we do a Boolean. Um, is... Yeah, that's fine, because if it rolls over, it'll be 250, uh, 255, the full value of an eight unsigned 8-bit eight integer. Um, and so we can say if it's, uh, yeah, greater than 0. Greater than 0 and less than 63. This should work. Then we increase it, else um, we just set it to the final color. So if it... For whatever reason, it falls outside of that range at any point for green. Uh, we just set it uh, to the final final color. This should work. Um, yeah, let's uh, just assume that will work right now. And I'm gonna add some breaks here between these blocks. Okay, I'm gonna just double check all this really quick. Uh, had a break here as well. Selected color. Um, we get our vector by yeah, just checking the distance. We're just uh, seeing if it's negative or positive in order to get our vector. We set that, um, and then if the current color doesn't equal the final color, then we change it. And so for Red and blue, we 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 change it uh, by one times the vector, so that can be a negative or positive one, and that's fine because it will never overshoot that because it's in, it's increasing or decreasing only by one. But for green, we have to be a little more careful. We have to check. Add some breaks there too. Uh, see if we overshot. In fact. I think I can get rid of all this now that we're checking up here. And this is a little bit heavy because we're multiplying. I wish we didn't have to do that. This is why I was wondering if there might be a clever way with the vector um, to tell. You know, we could just do the math here. So we don't need to do this math here. We can, because we know we're fading down typically. So this is minus two. Oh, this isn't gonna work. Um, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Uh, because if it does roll over to 255, it'll still be greater than zero. Mm. What I can do... What we can do here, because the only time it's going to roll down below zero is if it's at one. Um, so... is equal huh yeah uh, does not equal to one 
because if it's equal to one, we just want it to set set it to that value. So, and this can be plus two. We don't have to do the math there. Let's see here. There. Want to put this in parentheses? Right there. Okay. Okay. So now what we're doing is the only time it will overshoot is if it's at one. And so we're doing a check for that now. So we, if it's not equal to one, then go ahead, fade it, continue to fade it down. Otherwise, we just set it to the final color, which will be black in that case. <clears throat> and that's fine. Um, and then for if we're going up, we just check to see if plus two is going to overshoot 63. And as long as it doesn't, so if it's less than 63, then we can go ahead and add uh, a plus two. <coughs> Excuse me. There actually is a way to not multiply this. I just don't know if it'll actually save us cycles. Uh, we can do two if statements instead for our vector. <coughs> I don't know if I want to do that, though. Um... Otherwise, if it doesn't meet any of those those two criteria, it will just set it to the final color. Okay, I think we're good there. Um, just want to make sure everything's wrapped here appropriately. It looks like it is. We're going through each ID and the color lookup table according to our min and max. That's good. So the last thing we need to do is actually set our color. Um, and we just see, and I wish I could save some frames here as well. Um, I don't think it's going to cost us that much. So after, after we've changed both the red, blue, and green values for each channel. So we get out of this for loop, we actually need to now push. Um... Oh, let's see here. Yeah, we only need to do. No, uh, we actually don't need to do anything here yet. Um... Oh, let's see here. Maybe we do. Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, let's do this. Um, uh, no, I kind of want to... Hmm. I'm deciding where I want to actually update the, the real color lookup table. When I should do that. Should I do it after I've updated all 256 uh, colors in our, our lookup tables in memory... Uh, so everything's updated in memory, then we just do a final push to update our, our lookup table. And I'm thinking I want to do that. Um, do I want to do that in a separate function? Nah, we can do it here. Um, what we'll be doing is just running this for loop again. And Gosh, yeah, that's why I kind of want to just do it right now. Hmm... So what we could do, so we Tom Regs, um, one sec. Tom Regs, color, clut one, the first color lookup table. Uh, I, so this is the value we're updating. I'm just gonna write this out and decide whether I wanna do it here or not. So our red value is going to be um, oh, here, I'm actually going to change this, um, int selected, uh, clut ID equals, so we only have to run this once. equals i times 3 because I want to use this outside of this for loop um, yeah 
and then we can replace that with selected ID. And then this is selected color channel. There we go. Okay. Need to go and update all these. That shortens our code just a little bit, which is always good. And now we can use this selected cl CLUD ID to select um, the correct RGB values. Um, so our red is current colors. Uh, there we go. Oh, whoops, I screwed something up. Uh, selected. Yeah, I already screwed up. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. We're good. Okay. Current selected color channel. Copy that. There we go. And then uh gosh, I kinda want Uh, no, I can't use that. I have to use the selected cloud ID. Okay, yeah, uh, this is good. Selected color cloud ID plus the red is zero. And that's I understand that that's redundant, but it's okay. And then we need to bit shift that by 11 bits. And then we'll be oring that together with the blue channel which is the same thing, except we're looking at offset one, and we're shifting that by six bits. And then the green channel is the same thing, except now we're looking at ID two, and this is sh not shifting at all. So like that. And we or those all together, and that should give us our new eight bit color. Should. <laughs> should is the qualifier right and that goes through that that does everything there that may be it I think I think we're there the only thing that this doesn't do currently is check to make sure that the current 8-bit color value is equal to the channels when combined in our uh, current colors array in memory. Um, the the only time you might run into that is let's say we fade a scene up and then you change one of those color lookup values for like a light that's blinking in the scene or something. Um, that will change. What you could do is you just make sure you update this each time and then yeah you could do that but I don't know. This, this will work for what we're using right now. So, yeah, let's go ahead. And this code is quite a bit shorter than what we had previously. This was the previous code. Um, shorter, and I believe it is faster, too. So we'll find out in just a moment if it's actually faster or not. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull our function in to our program. Find out where I'm doing the live fade currently. If I can find it, it's here somewhere. It should start right here. Yeah, there it is. I'm just gonna comment this out. This is our new live fade. Okay, so there is one more thing we need to do. We're gonna be passing an array called current colors and then another array called final colors. <laughs> And those are actually already uh, declared in our screen tools header. So right here, they haven't been initialized yet though, uh, which is a problem. Um, we'll be writing uh, a function to actually set those at the beginning of, before we run this fade. Um, 
so for now let's let's just assume that we've done that um fade step this is our uh fade step variable which i already have set up for our old live fade and our fade step counter which i've already set up as well so those should work out of the box and our delay is the same as this so it's eight uh, and we're doing from one to no greater than 255 so we need to put uh, 256 because we want to make sure that we update 255 but when we hit 256 it stops so okay that's good so now we need to initialize our current colors and final colors um, what I'm going to do I'm thinking what I'm going to do for current colors is we're just gonna set it to zero up front Let's see here. How do I want to do this? Um, new life fade. We're going to make void update color channel array. We pass in color channel array which will be a unsigned 8-bit integer and I need to send in an array size because sometimes the palette we'll be sending in won't be uh, a full 256 color palette uh, so array size in this case will be 250 well we'll assume 256 but um, right now we'll just assume 256 the array size and then so we have a palette somewhere let's go find that here really quick I think I have the old code here first. Yeah, so right here, our intro palette, which is, I don't know what type that is. Let's see if we can find it here really quick. It is type unsigned 16 bit integer, and it's 256 values big. Um, so, uh, final, it's an unsigned. 16-bit integer um, and I'm gonna call it final palette yeah final pal uh, and this is two this is of array size so it knows exactly how much it's bringing in there I could make this a pointer too. Let's just make this a pointer. Um, it's just easier to pass those through that way. Um, let's see here. And I think that's it. That may be all I need. Or no, this isn't necessarily the final palette. This may just be a palette. Um, and then we're going to add another one. We went eight underscore T. Um, oh no, 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 16, unsigned 16 bit integer. Um, yes, that's fine. We may need to cast, I just realized we may need to cast something. Uh, and so in case the user doesn't send in a pallet, so if they set this parameter to null, We'll be doing a check for that and if it is null then we'll be passing in a color value and this way we can initialize our if we want to initialize to a solid color we can do that um, without having to pass in a palette for that essentially um, so uh, color we'll just call that one color okay we have that declared let's go define it update color channel array
So if, let's see here. Uh, this will just be a for loop. I equals zero. Uh, I does not equal array size. I plus plus. I need to turn my phone down here. It's turning into a distraction. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so if, if, uh, palette does not equal null, then we'll be updating, we'll be, yeah, we'll be initializing our color channel array according to that palette. Um, else we'll be setting a color set according to provided palette otherwise set according to provided color like that okay We have a problem. I just realized because we're not, I, I we're not updating the first value in that color, in in Tom, in in the actual array, and so we just got to make sure we do a plus one here. <laughs> All these little gotchas. So yeah, we got a plus one there. I'm not worried about this because we're just assuming that our first value is actually one in these arrays but it's zero in this in these arrays um yeah okay i think we're good <laughs> yeah i think we're good okay uh and this is where we separate everything out um yes this is where we're separating everything out um So color channel array, we're just going to do this. I'm not going to run another for loop for this. Um, equals I, ah, that is something we need to do. Selected clut ID. So this, we need to get, same as up in our fade function, we need to select the ID because, again, we're doing a two-dimensional array, but in a single-dimensional, single-dimension array. And so we just need to make sure we get our second dimension by offsetting by the number of values for each, for that second dimension. Um, and so that's I times three, like that. So select a cut ID, and then we select the channel by doing a plus zero, plus one, plus two. Like what we did here, uh, same thing. I'm, I'm a little worried that we may need to cast these as, uh, as unsigned 16-bit integers. We'll find out. We'll be able to look at the uh, compiler output. It should tell us if we need to cast that. I'm pretty sure. So, okay, color channel. Um, so, we're actually going to be setting this according to this. So our palette i plus one. Yes, this is plus one because we're not worried about that first ID ever. So it'll, all be off, it'll always be offset by one whenever we're accessing an actual palette. Um, <coughs> um, this is actually the other way, whoops. Equals palette ID, but the issue is, is this is uh, just the channel, correct? 
So this is just the red channel. And so we need to break out the red channel from our 16 bit value. So uh, that what that looks like, so this is what it looks like in hexadecimal. That's white uh, essentially, but our red values are only five bits somewhere up here. And so we need to break out that five bits. And we've done that before. Um, I've done that before in this older code and we can do that right here. So this is a this is what we need to do right here. Uh, let me just double check this really quick. Huh, that's weird. I don't understand. Oh, I'm doing some random thing here. Um, yeah. So let me pull these down just so we can see how I did it before, but I'm gonna actually do this all in one line now. So what we're doing is we're masking out the bits that we wanna keep and then we're shifting it down. Um, so let's go ahead and mask the bits by just using an and. So we max, mask those. And really, I just copied this down so I could get this value because that's the proper mask to get our red values. Um, and then what we can do is we can wrap that all in parentheses and shift it down 11 bits. So we can do that all in one line like that. And so basically what that's what, what that's done, well, I'm not gonna walk through that. Um, it's masking and bit shifting. So we're just, we're saving, we're pulling out all the values we don't care about, and then we're shifting the value we want all the way down to the bottom. So now it's uh, it will fit inside of an 8-bit unsigned integer, essentially. That's why we're doing it. Um, oh, we do need to cast this whole thing. I'm going to just do this just in case because uh, I think it will complain about it here. Is We're going to cast this all as an 8-bit, unsigned 8-bit integer. And the reason why is our palette is coming in as an unsigned 16-bit. And so we just want to make sure that when we're loading it into our color channel array, which is an unsigned 8-bit, that it's getting what it's expecting. Um, it would still work otherwise, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you just get in when you compile your program, when you build your program, it'll say, hey, you should probably cast this because you're setting a 16-bit unsigned integer to an 8-bit unsigned integer, and you may be losing data uh, by doing that. And so when we cast it this way, it just gets rid of that warning, essentially. And it's good practice to know <laughs> that, oh, I need to be aware that I'm pushing a 16-bit, potentially a larger number into something that's smaller, and so I could be losing data. So that's really important. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we've done that for red. Now we need to do that for blue and green. So let, let me find my masking value for blue, which is right there. And I was actually screwing this up. This should have been shifting down by six. That was really old fade code. I did that a long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, yep. Um, I can actually, let's see here. Nah, I'm fine with that. So there's our blue value and we're actually shifting that down six values and making sure we're selecting the right place it's going to in our color channel array. Uh, and do the same thing for green. And green has its own value as well. Red green, which is 3F. Like that. And these aren't being shifted down at all, and so we can actually get rid of a set of parentheses here, like that. And we've extracted those values to their array, and that goes through all uh, 256 values right now. Um, actually, just to array size. Okay, and so for our color value, um, we do the same thing as we're doing if we have a if we're pulling from a palette. But instead of the palette here, we're just taking the color and breaking it down into its channel components. It's 
going to shorten this coat up a little bit. Like that. Oh, and I'm doing that for all two. That's fine, because this usually isn't going to happen while a program's running, uh, what we're doing here. Um, so technically, we should only need to do this once, uh, because it's one color, right? We're not changing the color at all, but it's fine that we do it 256 times, because, well, is there a way I can speed this up? Yeah, I'm fine doing it this way. Makes our code shorter doing it this way too. And we're not going to be gaining that much by not repeating that 256 times. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, color, yeah, so that should be fine. So we've done a lot of code, or at least seemingly a lot of code, without actually running our program. So I doubt that this is going to work the first time out of the box. It'll be a pleasant surprise if it does, uh, but I really doubt it. But let's go ahead and run this uh, inside of our program. And we're going to be doing that right before we go into our while loop. Uh, this may change later, but um, I thought I copied over the whole function. That was weird. Let's copy that over. Okay, and we need to do it for both uh, our current colors and our final colors. So we'll pass in current colors first. And the array size here, let's go ahead and just do uh, 256 for that. Our palette is null, because uh, it's just our current colors are all gonna be black and so we just send in the color like that. That should update our current colors. And then for our final colors, uh, this won't be null. This will be um, intro pal. I don't think we need an ampersand for that, an address. Pretty sure we don't. Yeah, don't. We're going to leave the color to zero, and that's fine because it's going to be ignoring that because it, we're providing it a palette. Um, final colors. Final colors like that. And that should give us our fade, if I coded everything correctly. Um, I highly doubt I did. So let's uh, run a make command here really quick. We probably have some errors. Invalid operands at 421. At 59, huh? There's 49, there's 59. Fade counter. Why is it giving me a problem with that? New live fade. Let's go take a look at how I declared that new live fade. Um, oh, did I just mix something up here? We have our fade step, fade delay counter. No, it's the same thing. Just wondering if I missed something. Oh, I missed a comma. That is a problem. Okay. Okay, I forgot to uh, declare eyes for our four loops. That's fine. Let's go add those in really quick. Need to do it here. I really should just have a global variable for this, but um, that would be the most efficient way to do this. We'll just do it here. And in our in both of our new functions. Okay, I think we're good there. Let's run uh, clear and make again. Looks like we just have some syntax errors. Uh, Four eighteen. Four eighteen. There is a misplaced. Let's see here. Expected bracket before. For this token. Oh, yep. I'm just missing a bracket there. I probably missed it everywhere I copied this, too. Um, I only got rid of two of them at least. 426. Let's see here. Expected statement before. Oh, 
Oh, I just have an extra parentheses there, I believe. Should be good. 435. Um, let's see here. Do I have all my brackets? My brackets are there. That's good. Uh, I gotta work out all these parentheses. Let's see here. Yeah, there's definitely an issue with parentheses. So there's that first set. Yeah, I don't think I need that. There's that. that there's that okay I think we're good there then 452 is our last syntax error 452 oh great oh good I'm just missing a semicolon I was worried that my brackets weren't properly set up so that should give us a program that's building I'm gonna go check out the warnings here before we do anything um, it seems like we should have way more warnings than this Not worried about that. Warning. Make clean. Clear. Make. There we go. Plus a declaration of skill commit statement with no effect. I'm not worried about those. Let's go down to screen tools and function fade. I'm not worried about that. I think we're fine. I don't see any casting things, even though we may need to cast here in a little bit set up some casting for some things that were for very for for those arrays that we're setting um yeah let's uh run this in the emulator see if it actually does anything oh my goodness it faded that was awesome um looks like it's flickering that is weird I don't know if you guys can see that on stream. I don't see anything actually. That was weird. Let me push it out to the actual hardware. Hey, it's cool that that worked pretty much in the first go. <laughs> I was not expecting. We still need to add our fade delay. I realize that we're not doing anything with that. But. Accident. I missed that accidentally. Here, let's run it one more time. Run it one more time. I didn't have that switched over for you guys to look at. Yeah, so there is a problem going on with our fade. There's a flicker going on. Uh, that means it's jumping between two values. Um, that's probably our green value, if I had to guess. Um, but it is working uh, for the most part. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. New live fade. And I think it was faster too. Uh, generally speaking, it wasn't slowing down the program. We'll be able to tell here a little bit clearer once we add in our fade delay. Um, We do need a few more buildings there on the edge. Um, anyways, uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is for red and blue. Let's see here, can those, these can't go beyond the final color. So those are fine. Pretty sure it's our green. There's just something wrong with our green here. So we're fading up, so it's definitely going to be this. Um, and it's plus two is less than 63, then plus two. So if it's at 62, it'll run this check and it'll fail. And it'll go to here. It should be going to that final color. I wonder why it's having a problem. Here's the other thing. 
is it actually shouldn't be doing anything else because once fade step hits zero, it shouldn't even be running this anymore. Pretty sure I still have that set up. Yeah, right here. If it's greater than zero, then do it, but then it will eventually hit zero, so it shouldn't even be running this anymore. Here, let's do this. Um, let's bring back in the old fade, see if, if I have that same problem. I don't think I have that same problem. It's a slower fade because of that fade delay. But yeah, there's no flicker. So yeah, there's definitely still a problem. There, There is a problem with our new code. Hmm. We drop our fade step. <laughs> we technically don't need this if statement because we're checking for that outside. In fact, if, if we want to, we can run that check here. Um, we can build it in. Uh, so we can just turn this into an else statement. Else, if I can learn how to spell else. And then we wrap this whole thing in an if statement. If, oh, I copied that. If fade step is greater than zero like this like that and we can actually get rid of this out here let's see if that makes a difference oh sorry you guys couldn't see that i forgot to switch back over to my code i apologize Still have that flicker. Huh. It is working. I think it is working anyways. Oh, I know why it isn't updating. I have to add. So we're bringing in these, just these integers, uh, this fade step and fade delay counter, and um, oh, our fade delay, we shouldn't be, uh, let's see here, fade step. Uh, this needs to be a pointer to that because we're using an ampersand, so we're pointing to the address to bring it in, and so we need to use a pointer in order to change it like that. Um, <laughs> That's why, I think that's why it's still running. So let's run that again. Sorry, let me show you that really quick. So we needed to add a pointer to that. So let's see if it, to that variable. Uh, no, it's still not working. Wonder why. Let's check. Let's see here, do I have a console loaded here? Search and replace console. Console there. Console scratches. Screen tools, console. Console, okay, so I do not have a console loaded. Let's do that here really quick. We're going to debug, see if that value is actually going down, that fade step value. Um, and I'm going to just create a declaration for a new console here. That is of type file console. And then we need to open a console and I need to look that up here. I always forget the parameters for that. I need to memorize that eventually. Lib include and console there's an open custom console yeah that's what we want um split vertical we're going to be 
just opening that console. Uh, let's see here. Let's open it. Let's open it right here. Debug console. And this is open custom console with display, which is D, the X and Y position. Let's just put it at eight or like three, three for a pixel position. Uh, IDX is just zero. That should be fine. And then our width in columns, let's make it 40. And our height, let's just make it like four. Um, and then our layer is right up at the top like that. And we need to actually set our console that we just declared in our header file to this open console. And that does all this nice convenient setup for us. So should be good there. But yeah, that should give us our console. And then in let's see um, I'm actually going to make this oh uh, I think I just need to add this I want to run this uh, a print command when we're running this um, function and so I just need to declare it in this header file as well and then we can use it um, so in screen tools, new live fade, I just want it, uh, here, F print F to console. I just want it to print the fade step. So it's just going to be sending an integer, printing an integer and it's fade step like that. Terminal. Let's see if that actually builds. It may not build. Did I save everything? Nope, I didn't save everything, so that's not going to work right. Let's try that again. Let's see if it works. Why didn't that set? Why didn't that print anything? Skip it in state. No. Then copy makes pointer. Song playing. Clock. Control reaches the end of a non void function. Four sixty. Is that what we just added? Uh, 460. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so at 460, we have a warning. So right here, value com uh, computed is not used. Um, at nine. So this isn't actually doing anything. Why aren't you doing anything? Fade step. Fade step. Huh. So I've ran into this problem before, and I, I think the way I fix it, I don't know why I have to do this. Um, because if, if you look at my old fade code here, You'll see that I am assigning a fade step to a variable inside the function, adjusting it, and then reassigning it at the end here. <laughs> I just think it's silly that I have to do this, but maybe maybe you're required to do that. I don't know. So let's go ahead and do that here. Int step. Uh,
step yeah equals fade step like that and then we do here we do step minus minus print step step and then um, and then we set it the the variable we passed in we set it back like that I don't know why I need to do that but it seems like that's fixed problems in in the past you think I'd be able to just use that variable and point to it and change it but apparently not okay still not getting anything let's see here if there's anything else so we actually we got rid of that warning so not sure what's going on there I I need to make sure that we're seeing that we're actually seeing the uh, open custom console debug console so what I'm actually going to do is make sure I'm gonna force um, because right now it's using uh, ID one in the clut, I believe, in the color lookup table, to print um, the text. And so when it's fading up, we're obviously not going to see the text. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just every frame clut one second ID equals white, just to make sure that, that text is showing up. Because I'm a little worried that. Well, I'm pretty sure it isn't entirely uh, black in the palette that we're passing to it. But um, just want to make sure. Okay, so I think it's just not printing anything. Um, here, let's test something here really quick. I'm going to print inside of the main loop because it may it may just not be printing liking how I'm declaring and referencing the console. Um, it should work. Oh, it is having a problem with that. That's interesting. Uh, there's no easy way for me to fix this. That's the problem. Um, uh, well, what we can do is just update it outside of the function. So let me, uh, we're going to get rid of this. F, get rid of this. And then just outside, um, yeah, just move this in here and it will keep printing. Uh, what we could do is if fade step is greater than zero, then we print it. That way it doesn't just print forever because we're in a loop. Pretty, pretty important to do that because we want to make sure that those values are actually decreasing over time. Um, yeah. Should do the trick. Yeah, so it's actually not decreasing that value for some reason. Why? Yeah, it is a bit strange. Let's see your fade step. What is its type? Is it actually an unsigned 16-bit integer? No, it's just a normal integer. Um, that's fine. Make sure I'm proper, uh, properly, yeah, fade step right there, that's fine. New light fade, yep. Int fade step. It's fine. 
And then we set the fade step again right there. Why? Why aren't you working? Oh. Step. That needs to change. I don't that I don't think that would have caused a problem though. Maybe it would have. I don't know. Push it again here. Take a look. See what it says now. Nope, still not going down. Why in the world is that not working? I do the same thing up here and I know this works. <laughs> it was working before without a problem. I don't know why I'm setting it to an unsigned 16-bit integer. That shouldn't make a difference. Um, fade step. Yeah, there's... Don't know what's going on. 524. Let's see if that has anything to do with anything nope it doesn't uh, 603 probably doesn't post on skunk skunk knit 100 let's get rid of that we don't need that sorry I'm kind of distracting myself right now I don't need that control reaches the end Um, void function. This needs a semicolon at the end, which is useful. Um, not worried about any of that. Scroll, not worried about any of that right now. One ninety five timer. Not worried about that. That's not in the function we're working in. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Our fate is working, which is good news. Um I do not understand why this isn't decreasing. This is bizarre to me because I'm doing the same thing in the old function and it's working just fine. Um, as far as I know. I mean, we can check. Um, let's check. Let's see if it is working. This should tell us. Yeah, working just fine. Bizarre. Yeah, really bizarre. I do not understand why that isn't working. At fade step. Fade step is greater than zero. I'm there just must be a typo here. Oh duh. It's not hitting it because I'm doing an if else statement. Uh this just needs to be um uh, actually I just need to move this into here, let's let's do this. Let's delete you you just adjust the tabs for this uh, shift tab there we go it needs to be inside our function here 
There we go. That's why it wasn't working. It should be working now. Let's check. Let's check. Huzzah! We got it. Oh, the reason why we do 33 is we don't actually hit zero. Because it stops at zero. That makes sense. Cool. I don't know if that's any faster. I wasn't really paying attention. Let's pull the... Uh, um, the debug console. Because we don't need that anymore. In fact, I can just get rid of all this. I'm just going to custom console. Just comment that out while we're not using it because we may need it in the future. And run that one more time. And this time, I'm just paying attention to the speed during the fade. Oh, yeah, that was... Pretty sure that was a lot faster. We, we, we're still getting that flicker. Um, honestly, don't know. Pretty sure it has to do with the green, but not sure. Uh, let's do one more thing before I call it a stream. I need to add in the delay. Um, if fade step and... So this is pretty easy. We just need to do and we're going to do the same thing. Delay counter is equal to fade delay counter. Excuse me. And delay counter is equal to zero. runs through we update well we do need an else now for this uh, else delay counter minus minus uh, and this will be updated the f the Fade will be passing this back out outside of everything. Counter equals delay counter. Like that. Um, we do need a reset delay counter. Yeah. Counter. Uh, so delay counter equals fade delay like that okay that should give us the nice slow fade um this may actually help us see where that flicker is coming from too uh now that we have this delay counter that's what i used right fade delay counter yep fade delay Fade delay is the actual delay. Yep. Okay. This should work. Sorry, I didn't switch over to coding for that. I just added a check for that fade delay, and I'm dropping the value. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. Yeah, there we go. Nice slow fade. And it's going to flicker up until it the, the um, fade step hits zero. <coughs> It's working though. Was it slower? <laughs> Wasn't really paying attention again. Uh, it looks like it didn't afford us any speed. <laughs> it looked like it was still slowing us down. Um, yeah. I just don't know how um, well there there is one way I can think of of fixing that is um, we do an asynchronous change to those values so 
uh, basically instead of running a for loop inside of the function instead of running a for loop here um, we actually get rid of the for loop and we just have a counter that's globally accessible and that way we know which value we're updating so as it's fading in it's just updating as many as it can as quickly as or just once a frame basically Ooh, does that work um, no it doesn't basically we need to set up an interrupt is what I'm saying is just every frame it, it updates as many values as it can but it doesn't slow it down um, at all <sighs> I don't want to do that it just it, it blows my mind that setting <laughs> going through 256 values 16-bit values and updating those takes that much processing power there's I, I just feel like there's something I'm missing especially now that we've we're not having to parse out those channels each frame like I feel like it's actually running a little bit slower than it was before and I don't know why it really is weird um, This is set once, like this is really, this is very simple math. We're doing no multiplications. Um, we are doing 256 multiplications outside here. Let's see here, is there a way I can speed this up? No, there isn't. Um, this has to be times three. Right? Yeah. And that has to be times three there. I just, yeah. This has to be a multiplication. We can't change that because that allows us to fade up or down um, per channel, which is nice. These are inexpensive operations. Yeah, I just don't understand why that's so slow. The only thing I can figure is it's this for loop um, that's slowing it down so much. But, yeah. Maybe just enough to cause a problem, I guess. Anyways. I'm going to mull this over during the day today, during the work day, to see if I can figure out a better solution. I just don't know how, how I could optimize this any further. Uh, at least when it comes to updating the entire uh, color lookup table. Oh, something crashed. It's not good. Ah, something crashed in that program. I'm not setting something correctly. So we're going to have to track down that problem too. Um, it's definitely something to do with the fade because that's the only thing, major thing that we've changed. So I'm just seeing if there's any warnings. Oh, my guess is the palette probably just isn't updating. Um, maybe, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out later, but yeah, I just don't understand how I can make this even more optimized because we're only doing... We're, yeah, we're saving a ton of cycles by not parsing the channels every frame. We're only doing that once before uh, the, the loop actually starts for that intro card. So that saves us a lot there. That saves us thousands of cycles. Um, yeah. Uh, it saves, yeah, it saves us uh, about 2,000 cycles, somewhere around there. Um, which may not be a whole lot to tell you the truth, but relatively speaking, um, yeah, just don't know how to make this faster. Well, um, that'll be it for today. Uh, I, I don't think we'll, I'll worry about this too much tomorrow. We'll move on to something else a little more interesting tomorrow. Uh, we'll take a look at the scroller. We'll update the text for the scroller. Um, that may be an overhaul actually on the scroller 
we'll see um i'm not sure exactly because like right now you look at it uh it's just scrolling off to the left i don't know if we're doing just a big sprite scrolling off into the void or if we're actually just shifting the data so it's we just have a box that we're shifting the data to do that scroll um we'll take a look at that code tomorrow um, and hopefully do some updates to that optimize that there's not much else I want to do with this card other than just take a look at that and make sure it's working as well there's a few warnings we're getting right now um, and we'll take a look at those and see if we can fix those they look like they're probably easy to fix um, and then we may move on to here and I right now what we're doing is we're calculating a nice bounce for that with math I actually want to optimize that so it's just a lookup table for that motion um, I may already be doing that I don't know I, I did update this demo once back in 2018 and I'm not sure all of what I did then and so it may already be up, updated anyways we'll take a look at that um, and once we get there we're pretty much done there's just some cleanup on some things like updating the gradient sprite and stuff like that but anyways um, yeah thanks for uh, thanks for watching uh, we'll do some more programming tomorrow um, hope you have a great day uh, let me know uh, if there's anything specific you want to see programming wise that's always uh, an offer I make here uh, and otherwise we'll see you tomorrow have a great day bye